Hello everyone, welcome to the Legacy Podcast. This is number two of our series, and we're going back in time a bit, really back in time, to 1947 in fact, to a classic movie called Brighton Rock, which features Richard Attenborough and one and only William Hartnell. So, uh, we've all, I've got an interesting panel tonight. We've got four people, me, uh, Harry, why don't you say hello? Hello everyone. Philip. Good evening everyone. And Doctor Who man. Good evening. Hello. Okay, this one's a, it's because I was told to watch this by my good friend Doctor Who man, and I was a little skeptical at first off of Honest with her classic Everybody. films, but oh god, it's so good. So I'm going to do some first impressions first. Uh, let's go with Harry. So what do you think of this film? Like, what's your overall like just initial impression of the film? It's very well done. Very different than what most of the movies you would expect from this time period. But the fact that the way they set up the opening credits and such is so much different than even we see today. He, that was one of the first things that caught my eye. Okay. Uh, what about you, Philip? Um, like, like you said earlier, um, I was uh, initially um, skeptical because I'm not really into old movies that far back. But um, as I went through it, I, I gradually enjoyed it. And, you know... It, it, it's an excellent film, and I I would recommend it to anybody who's a who's a, a film enthusiast of that of that time period to watch it. Okay, and Doctor Who then? Well, I absolutely love this movie. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, the first time I watched it was way back in 1983, mm-hmm. late at night, and I thought, oh, what's coming on? I think I just flicked it on. I didn't even look at the TV guide. I just flicked it on. And suddenly Bright and Rock came on, and I tend to do this with old movies at night, the BBC Two, just let it on, and I couldn't keep off the arse, you know, I couldn't get, I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen, and I suddenly saw, you know, William Hartnell in the <laughs> credits, you know, you know, looking menacing, and um, the uh, the the music, the music reminds me of um, a film. Do you remember the original Cape Fear with Robert Mitchum? No? Not ringing the bell. No, well, not ringing the bell. Never seen it, but I've heard of it. Well, they 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 used the re uh, it was remade with uh, Robert De Niro and um, and uh, Jack, Nick Nolte. You've seen the remake, have you? Cape Fear. Uh... The remake with um, um... Robert De Niro and Nick Nolte. Yeah, the, yeah, the latest. Yeah, I saw that. I've seen the latest. They use yeah. the same music for that. Anyway, it's got the same music of it. And very similar music, you know, very suspense thriller. Yeah, I did reckon there was something about the music at some stages. You know, when it's going along, it's like I know this, but where from? Yeah, and then suddenly it's all zany and happy and going along, and then you know, it improves from then on. I mean. James, what did you think of it when you uh, first saw it? Because I know you're not really into the gangster sort of genre, are you? Uh, yes and no. It's hard because, uh, okay, so when you told me it was a gangster film, I was like, oh, God. Because these days, gangsters, they're a bad thing in the public eye, yeah? Obviously, no one likes <laughs> gangsters these days. I mean, they're causing a lot of trouble. The films are pretty poorly done these days. There's not much going. But this one's great. It's got a... Uh, I loved the, um, there was a twist at the end, we'll talk about in a bit, and there was also a, it's very good, it's interesting to me, but the, uh, the kid is the evil one. Who, Pinky? Yeah, he is yeah. pure, literally Man. evil, in my eyes Man. anyway, I think he's really bad. <laughs> oh no, he is bad, and hats off to, to Richard Attenborough. Yeah, um, that is a, a sublime acting, I was scared psycho. of him halfway through. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird thing to see someone that, that we know of nowadays, or that we did know nowadays, who, who had the ability to portray himself in that way. It's a very good piece of acting for me. Okay, uh, so we got our initial impressions. Next one I'm going to have to ask, I'm going to go with some actors, if that's okay. Now, obviously, yeah. we're going to start with Hartnell, because we all love Hartnell, yeah? yeah. And I'll start yes. with Doctor Who then first. What do you think of Hartnell's performance in this? And do you think, basically... I thought it was outstanding, you know. You know, I thought it was like it was more like um, his right hand man, you know, Richard Attenborough's right hand man, very menacing, and 
what's going to ask you is, um, and he didn't really have to do much, and he sort of like mm-hmm. entices you, you know, you know, give oh, us yeah. the bread, give us the money, <laughs> cough yeah. up then, mate, you know. He has a presence, doesn't he? Very bad pre- presence. I mean, what did you think um, when um, he went and bullied someone for the money with Richard Attenborough? Before Richard Attenborough cuts him with a with a cutthroat razor. Oh, just and excellent. He spits on the floor. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Notice that. Yeah. I mean, yes. what did you think of that, guys? Oh, it, it, it's because I'm so used to have to see William Hartnell playing a a cottagey old man or grandfather type, as, as as we all know Doctor Who. But to see him acting in this way, it's just it's kind of a it's kind of a culture shock, really, because you you can't think of him any other way. Unless you've seen other films that he's been in, but I've not really seen other films that he's been in, and this was just a culture shock for me. Mhm. Okay. Well, seeing as you're, you're talking now, Philip, uh, what anything else you want to put on Hartnell's performance? You think of Hartnell's performance? Hey, it's a believable, um, um, and and it fitted for that time period as well. The way he played, it, did his part, because you can believe he he's that actual character in that timeline. And would you think? Excuse me, um, James. Would you think um, it was an early version of, you say, your method acting? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You know, very dark, very... Look, mate, I'm going to kick your head in now. Yeah, yeah. I, I prefer that kind of acting to to um, to um, acting that we have today, because today's acting, it's all spectacle and no substance. Because I I'll, 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 I'll really want to bring in, because we've got an American here, really, if you don't mind me, James. Um mm-hmm. Because basically it was a lot of difference from the gangster movies at the time where at the time you had, you know, Jimmy Cagney, the American version, Jimmy Cagney and and um, and uh, oh, George Raft. Because this movie was at, wasn't called in America Brighton Rock. Um, it was called Young Scarface. Was it? Did you know that, Harry? Pardon? Uh-huh. In, uh, in, um, in America, when this movie was released in America... It wasn't called Brighton Rock. It was called Young Scarface. I never knew that. I've never even heard of it. I've never seen it or heard of it. Yeah, it was... It was, it, like it, that. was it, it was called after the Paul Muni um, film, uh, which was done in, in uh, uh, the late 1930s, of, I believe. Um, I believe. Um, and it was the um, original version of Scarface, which um, s- starred... Uh, I'm saying something, because... I've seen clips from both versions of Scarface I'm familiar with. Yeah. And that is saying something because I was not aware of the fact that this movie was the original basis for Scarface. No, this was called Young Scarface ah. in in America. You see, in Britain it was called uh, Brighton Rock, which was uh, a title um, um, called by a book by Robert Gr- uh, by um um. Uh, Robert Greg called um, um, what's it a, a book um, by Richard Green I think uh, I think his name I can't remember his name it's, 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 it's me called Brighton Rock but because of America because of they had such um, great su- success with um, Scarface the original Scarface the Paul Muni Scarface not the Al Pacino version um, with Paul Muni and George Raft, um, they decided to call it Young Scarface with Richard Attenborough and William Hartnell, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Yeah. To coincide it. Hmm. So, um, and um, on the uh, screen um, thing on the YouTube, on the YouTube video, you'll see the uh, original American poster as well on the uh, picture. So, yeah, so in America it was called Young Scarface. That's interesting. I did not know that. Thank you for that. Ah, sure. Uh, so where are we? Okay, so okay, Harry, what do you think about uh, Hartnell's performance in the story then? I thought he it was very different from what I'm used to seeing him as. I'm used to seeing him as the Doctor. For me, this was a treat because I had never seen Hartnell in any role outside of Doctor Who before. I'd seen Pat Troughton and John Pertwee. Tom Baker and other in roles outside of the Doctor, but this was a first for me, and I found it quite fascinating, quite interesting to see. Hmm. Okay, 
That's right. Uh, so now I'm going to go to the next topic, which is an interesting one. It's Richard Attenborough, because as we all know here, he sadly passed away recently. So, yeah, about um, three weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really upsetting because Richard Astor has done some great, great movies. Gandhi. Yep. yep. And Chaplin. He, yep, he's he's also a sublime actor. He can direct. He can do it all. Yeah. He's a one and all package. And his younger brother is David Attenborough. No, David Attenborough did not die, which a lot of people think. <laughs> and he and David Attenborough. Dave, David Attenborough is famous for being a, a naturalist, a wildlife presenter. Right. His yeah, voice is extremely recognisable. But, I think. but a lot of people don't know that um, that, that David Attenborough was uh, responsible for launching BBC Two and a lot of other programmes and the first colour TV in the um, the BBC. Wow. I did not know. That's interesting. That you see, wow. that's the thing. He's an all round package, David Attenborough. Anyway, he's yeah. does it all, and uh, yeah, the, half the programmes he the rates would be absolutely ridiculously boring, but his voice draws you in. It is, it is. But, Very good voice. No, anyway, back on um, topic. Uh, that's Richard another Ar- thing about that. But with Richard oh. Attenborough, with um, Richard Attenborough, I think it was one of only his third or fourth movie because uh, when he was still in acting school, I believe. I think. Yeah, he's young. So yeah. uh, we're going to talk about Richard Attenborough here. So I think I'll start with myself this time. I. It's interesting because he's obviously very young, as you said, he's in acting school. But God, this guy can act. I mean, he's so sinister. I've never seen so. so I've never been scared of a child, <laughs> should we say? Yeah. To this one, it's one of those, you know, really creepy. You can tell the guy is insane. Now, at first, you you kind of with this guy. Who is this guy? He's behind them. What's he doing? What's this all about? But as the movie progresses, you realise this guy's insane. I mean, he's trying to take on a mob which has like forty odd men. Which is obviously insane as well. Adult men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Adult men. Uh, he betrays his friends for no good reason. I mean, Spicer. Yeah. No good yeah. reason. I, I like Spicer. <laughs> and then he tried to kill the girl for no reason too. Uh, well, because he... Well, uh, it's not for no reason. No, for no there reason. Is, yeah, there is a he, reason. He, we'll get to that why he did. I mean, he, he married her for a very good reason. Yeah. yeah. So she couldn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, uh, in the... When he did the recording, he actually doesn't love her, but that's the twist at the end. So yeah. we'll ask, uh, let's go with Harry first. What do you think of Richard Attenborough's performance in this story? He did a great job. I mean, I've known him as an actor, producer and director. I've known of him that way. Man is just very talented, period. That's all I can say. The man is so talented, it's hard to put into words. Yep, I agree. He's very good. Uh, Philip? Did you uh, did you just mention that this was his third outing in a movie? I think it's that his third or fourth. It's it's not well, a lot. Well, I'll tell you something then. If that if if that is his, his third or fourth outing, he's got acting chops to the to the T man. Because like uh, James says, he is so convincing as a as a character as a badly character. I mean, yes. you wouldn't want to cross him in a dark street or anything. No. Really good. Really I mean, good. Can, can you imagine saying to you, you know, hello, Philly. How are you? <laughs> that freaked me out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like it's um, it, it is amazing. But um, yeah. anyway, I mean, okay, oh, you'll turn the up, Mo. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, he's this is not the first. Uh, he this is the um, first film I believe he acted with William Hartnell, but I think he did three others. Um, what, with William Hartnell. With with William Hartnell, we should have, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um and um I forget which ones actually. I I do remember I think what uh, one was called The Way Ahead, which mm-hmm. is I think a, a first world war story with David Niven. I can't yeah, remember yeah. the other one. Okay. But um yeah. But um I'm I was amazed at his young age because he's um He's, he's playing Pinky Brown, which is supposed to be 17. And he takes over the uh, the head of his own mob, you know, to uh, rival Coleone, which is a bigger... Coleone had more money, you know, and, of course, much more experience. Because you think, how come... How can a bunch of 40, 50-year-olds let this boy, you know... 
take over their, you know, their mob. You know what I mean? Didn't you think of that? Yeah, it was interesting, but Dallo, he, I always believed secretly he was pulling the strings, and it kind of came, you know, he, well, at the very least, Pinky, fool, it was only his only weakness. He trusted him blindly. You know, oh, because he, oh, you mean the William Hartnell character? Yeah, got clarified. Yeah. Dallo is the William Hartnell character. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, I think, I think Dallo really liked him. Yeah. But yeah. secretly, I think he was, you know, uh, he knew at any time he could just, you know, flip the table. Exactly, because you you think of Richard Attenborough like a, like a Dalek, really. Absolutely heartless, you know, absolutely yeah. heartless. And um, the one, because basically, um, oh, William Hartnell plays Dallow, which um, in... The book was written by Graham Greene. That's it, I've got it. Graham Greene in 1938 that it was published. And Dallow is supposed to be an ex-prize fighter boxer, you see. You know, okay. a little bit beaten up. But um, the, the William Hartnell character, the only time you realise that he must have been in the ring is he's got a little cauliflower ear, you know. I suppose oh. they, they couldn't do... Um, they but couldn't do on. the old flattened nose, I suppose. Yeah. But... Um, yeah. But the way he, the way William Hartnell played him was just uh, like, i got a job to do, and if I have to cut someone up to do it, you know, to, to, to get my debts, yeah. it's unbelievable. It's funny, though, that when you, when, you, when, you, when you look at him portraying his role, you get a kind of semi-gentleman type thing about him, but then now you just said about him having a boxing background, it kind of just like, oh, you wouldn't have thought that, really. yeah. But in the book, Dalo had a background. He's just a thug. Do you, you not? Do you understand? Well, yeah, that's the thing. Um, a lot of people. I mean, Hartnell uh, in this program. To be fair, even though he protected the girl, he's still he's still playing a git because he let he let Spicer die. <laughs> he yeah. just yeah. stood there and idly watched. Well, he, he's just doing a job. It, it, you know, it's nothing personal, as they say. Um, but what I'm wanting to get you guys, the difference is and. It's an, it's completely different to the modern day gangster movies. Even today, um, even the gangster movies of then as well is it's very mentally psychological. Yeah. You know, it plays with people's minds. You know, and that's the most brilliant thing about the movie. It's very so long, so psychological. I mean, did you did you? Did you think that, James? Oh yeah, I think you know it's uh, you don't know who's the good guy. <laughs> I suppose the best guy, well, obviously Spicer, but he got knocked off real quick. What was the guy's name? The guy with the mustache who left in the beginning. Oh. Sorry. You know what I'm on about the guy with the mustache when he found out Spicer died. He left them. Yeah, he left them, and then he and and then um. And then, because uh, he tried to run off, didn't he? Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh. Well, he, he got away, didn't he? Yeah. Oh. No, he didn't, actually. Because he, wasn't he the one who pushed him down the stairs? No, that was Spicer. No, that was Spicer? Spicer. No. No, hang on. It's one. Oh. Hang on. Hmm. Maybe I missed the scene. I don't know. I can't remember this now. I, oh, hang on. Yeah, that was Spicer being pushed down the stairs because he he tried to cause he tried to pack his suitcase and get rid of, go go to the to that pub up in the yeah go to the Paris. pub Nottingham yeah yeah uh, yeah go to the pub in Nottingham and um I I think I can't remember which which what he might have run off or, or whatever but what I what I, what I do remember is what did you think of that scene when he when um when uh, David Attenborough pushed the um Spicer right in front of the you know. A uh, solicitor. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know. That was that just showed he didn't give a rat's monkey's rat's bum, really. Exactly, exactly. He didn't. He didn't. Mm. But what did you think of the way it was shot? Do you think it was it was really brilliantly? You know, when you actually. Saw Everything it? was good. It was very clever the way he checks the banister. Yeah. Everything, you know, it was all. There's no mistakes there, really. And uh, I tell you what, it really helps that this is black and white too. That shot too. Don't yeah. think it would have uh, worked in color. Yeah, I know what you mean. I agree yeah. with that. It's one of those period signs. Um, right, I was gonna 
ask you guys what was the question? <laughs> I've lost track. <laughs> uh, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly honest, guys, okay? Yeah. Uh, do you like any of the... So we're going to talk about supporting characters, is that okay? Yeah. There's quite, yeah. A, few in this, there's quite a few in this story. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, uh, I suppose the the girl was a main character. Uh, so what do right. you guys think about the supporting characters? Let's start with Harry. You know, that means anyone you see, you know, like the police, everything. I'd yeah? say that if there was any one character I really enjoyed in the movie, it had to be the, the police officer that the one gal was going to all the time trying to fill him in on what she was tracking down and everything. Because he at least was willing to listen. You mean Ida Brown? The yeah. Uh, yeah, Ida, Ida Arnold, her name is, yeah. Um, yeah, at, at the beginning, I just thought she was a drunken old girl, really, you know, but... No, but once she got her head into gear, she was not letting go for, for talking about Because she felt sorry for the um, for the guy who actually got killed in the beginning of the film, you know. Yeah. Well, let's uh, mention him, He's, that was an interesting character too, I thought he played really well. Yeah. Shot amount of time is playing. Frank was in it. I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Fred. Fred. That Fred. Was it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And you think, oh my God, why is he scared? Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, because you couldn't work out why he was running and being scared of it until you realised they were getting the people were after him. Exactly. You know, want a cigarette? He's going to anybody. You know, want a cigarette? Or you know, I'll take it out. Yeah. And the only one, the only one who um, felt sorry for him was Ida, really. Um, and you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll let James finish it off because he knows what happens next, don't you, James? <laughs> you went about his death. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was. Uh, we can talk about that, guys. But let's get into uh, real quickly. I'll finish up the uh, support questions. Uh, so, you you would say Ida too, Mo? I, I I would say Ida, and also the um, the uh, the young girl. Um, oh, what's her name? Yeah, I Rose. Rose. That's it. Rose. Rose. Thank you. Because let's not. They're they're both sixteen year olds. You see. Mhm. And she she um um basically the the. Um, in those days in Brighton, Brighton um, there's there's people saying, you know, take a photograph without you knowing, and then, you know, if you want it, you keep the ticket, and then, you know, get it if you want, and they display it, and they take, they took a picture of um, of him before he died, you know? Yeah. So, and that's one, that is the plain part of the film, is trying to get Richard Attenborough, Pinky Brown, trying to get the... Uh, the uh, the evidence from him, you know what I mean, and uh, also she's the only one who could ID him, really, you know. Mhm. Yeah. Well, that's um. Oh, sorry. Uh, last person to ask. Uh, yeah, Philip. So, any uh, supporting characters? What come to your mind? Well, like in the El said, I, I, I found Rose to be a, 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 a great, complicated supporting character in regards to her notions of love and and support. Because that girl, you know, she really needed help, to be honest. She really needed help. People were trying to help her out, and she just wouldn't listen. And the other support, yeah. the other supporting character I, I kind of liked was the, indeed the, um, the lady who was um, doing the in, in detecting. Oh, she was good. Ida, Ida, yeah, Ida, Ida. Yeah. yeah, she was pretty cool. She was cool. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. Uh, I, if I would have to pick one myself. I would, uh... What's the guy's name? The monster, the guy. Oh, Cal- Calioni. Yeah, Cal- Cal- yeah. yeah, that's the Italian. Ooh, love that the Italian, character. Yeah, the Italian, yeah. Mm. He played that, he played... I mean, it was a very small role, but yeah. he, he got that spot on. He got on the spot on. You can't compete with me. You can't compete with me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he was just basically laughing at me. Exactly. But, um, yeah, you got to think of it. you got to think of it. It's like... God, what... What have you, you know, got yourself in, into, you know, Pinky? But he never really got. You never ever thought that he was really scared of anything, even being sixteen year old, you know. Yeah. Because um. 
I, I would have been, uh, I would have been at that age, very, very not knowing what I was doing, you know, in, um, you know, controlling a, a bunch of mobsters, you know, 30, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, some of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, but, uh, what did you think, I mean, the only thing is, is you, you just can't believe how naive people were in those days, you know. Do you want well, to start Oh, yeah. He's a young girl, yeah. you know what I mean? Because he was, was not nice to her at all. Yeah, but she was very impressionable, wasn't she? I mean, oh, I'm surprised that she fell in love that quickly with him anyway. Even though... I'm, I'm sorry? Even though, even though she, could, she could blatantly see that he wasn't that much of a nice geezer to her. Well, could she see? Could love she see? Good. Love is blind. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think. Yeah. It is. Um. It is. It is. It is blind. But. You know. It's just. I think. I've known a lot of girls. That feel for bad guys just because they're bad guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think that was a bit of that. She was uh, madly in love with him, and that's what. Uh, so well, I'm going to bring this to the the twist now, and I, which uh, and we I'll all bring bring, Ar- on. bring bring Harry in. Ask him what he thinks. Oh, of uh, I thought we asked him about the supporting character. Oh, did he? That's the first question I asked. Yeah, he uh, chose the the police, the guy uh, in charge. No, of the police. I mean about what he thinks about um, Rose. Oh, go on then, Harry. What do you think about Rose? Rose was an interesting character. I mean. Best way to describe her is that she reminded me in some ways of a one of the ladies from the movie The Godfather, Michael's wife, only with a different twist to the way the, based on the way the story ended. Okay. Uh, right. So we have I said my opinion. Yeah, I I suppose yeah. Blind love. She's a um, to be honest, at first she, she's a she's you know like the cute girl, isn't she? Yeah. We were uh, we were there to but... remember she started off being as a a, a, a table waiter in the um, in the uh, restaurant place, didn't she? Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. where the waitress, yeah. The waitress, and then that's where she ran into uh, Pinky. Yeah. I mean, do you remember those coffee bars back in the day? You know, you know, when you was growing up, they were still about, weren't they? Cause I um, not for me. I, I never, I never, I never went. Out oh, you know, you never used to go to the beach and and all that. No, and... no, no. Oh, I think back, back, back hmm. in um, the like the mid to late seventies, I remember them and things, and they still dressed them up like that. It's the same. They should have some coffee little things in there, but now they're just like dirty little greasy spoons. Now you know what I mean? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, but um. But, um, yeah. Sorry, James, carry on. Oh, God, sorry. Um, I lost a bit of a train of my thought there. Okay, guys, we're going to go to the twist. Uh, if you don't know already, there's a twist at the end where there's a record which Pinky has already recorded his voice on where he says, if I correctly, he hates her. What's, anyone know the exact words? Oh, um, oh, damn. Um, uh, you want me to say I love you? Well, here it is. Well, yeah. here it is. I can't say the rest of it because it's kind of, it gets to, oh, I want, do you want, you want to hear that, you want, to say, you want to say I love you? Well, here it is. I don't love you. Go back to your town. Go back to where you come from and leave yeah. me alone. I hate you, you horrible little slut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes pretty vile. That's right. So basically, just. You know. Yeah. yeah. Like that. But what he it is, I want really, to get before uh... that, um, what it is, the reason why it's psychological for me was um, in the book, um, and it did mention it, if you look closer, it, in there, but it was too, he was actually supposed to um, put a uh, splasher with acid. Ah. Because, I, because the second film that I've watched, the, the second version, yeah. that, that's twisted around a bit. It, yeah. No, but that's what happens in the book. At the end of the day, the fatality, because uh, um, Dallow stops him. Yeah, but the acid because he the acid he pulls the acid ends up smashing in um, poor old Pinky's face, and it melts his face off. 
Yeah, you know what um, I mean. That's but it was film. too too much for um, 1947. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you noticed in 1947 he had something in his pocket. Okay, yeah. And on the bench when he was um, uh, trying to call uh, Rose. Oh, he's holding uh, into that bit now. Yes, you're um, right. He was, was putting his hand in his pocket. That and he was talking about oh, I got something that could damage someone's face. Or someone, yeah. you know, permanently, and that was the acid bottle. But they couldn't put it down. In the book, he actually brings about the acid bottle out, puts it on the um, the the arm of the uh, bench, yeah. and spills a little bit, and it burns through, you know. And he chosen her out mm. like dangerous he can be, you know. So oh. she perfectly knows what he's like, you know, perfectly like, you know, because then you've got Ida trying to persuade. Um, um, poor old Rose not to marry him. That's because right. uh, what did you think of the scene where um, uh, she's in the room with William Hartnell and William Hartnell's sort of like a father figure, you know? Exactly, yeah. He has um, Hartnell really cared when about When she goes, yeah. um, he's your mate, isn't he, Della? He goes, yeah, he's my mate. And he goes, um, and he goes, uh, you know, what do you think? He goes, yeah, yeah, he cares for you. Well, well, yeah, well, he's, well, he's, he sort of cares for you, because I mean, Dallow knows exactly what he's like, you know. Cool, But, um, because yeah. he's been trying to tell her not to, not to do him, because he knows for a fact that he loves her. She loves him, you know what I mean? She loves Pinky, so, you know, you know. But I just, I just actually think there was, um, there was a scene with, uh, I think it was the, uh, the maid of the house they were staying in, that they really? shared, the gangsters. Yeah. You see that woman and William Hart and all that was like... What did you think of the old, sort of, um, between those two? Although it didn't last long, you know, between the Dallow character and her. And the, the woman of the house. You um, know, when he pretended to kick her backside, you know. Yeah, that was that was a bit of a, that's a very short scene, and... and um, I thought she was. I, I could have liked to have seen more of her. Do you know when? Um, do you know when um, uh, Pinky pushed um, that bloke through the bound uh, through the banister? Yeah. I was surprised she she didn't show up to say, "Yeah, what's going on here?" That kind of. Um, yeah. Because she I, knows what's going on because they pay her off. Cause yeah. Because think she survived. She knows. She knows. You know what I mean? She knows mm. exactly. But um, but because basically, um. Can I just move it on because I think James has forgotten. What did you think of the um, when they? Yeah, well, I was going to talk about the uh, twist. That's the topic I brought up. Yeah, it's not the twist. <laughs> no, no, because the twist is towards the end of the movie. But yeah, exactly. I just wanted to bring it up as a point. I was thinking about um, the other crucial bit was when they were going to, when when he was going to set up to um, for Colioni to. Um, to have a go to, to kill um, Spicer. Spicer, and they yeah. ended they ended up trying to, you know, kill like Pinky. Him. Yeah, yeah. Pil- you know, by slashing him with the knife, and he goes, "Oh, it's me you want, not you know, not it's it's him you want, not me." You know, what did you think of uh, Richard Attenborough's um, there? Because that's the only time you see Pinky absolutely scared. Uh, right. Um... Okay, so we're on about... I see you know, where in, we're the race, in the race uh, course, you know, with all... Yeah, yeah, so uh, Pinky... When, it's, um, when, it's, the... when, they, when Spicer thinks they're all going, ganging, ganging up on him, Cody Oney's mob, yeah. they suddenly turn on to Pinky, you know, in the race the, the racetrack. And then they slash uh, Pinky in the, um, in the face. Well, um... The scene is very interesting because um, what, what's bizarre to me is <laughs> Spicer obviously knows that Pinky set him up because <laughs> he can hear him saying it, you know, when he's being attacked. But uh, I don't know why. Pinky was just so insane and arrogant that he thought no one would touch him. But it, that's suppose. interesting because he could, he could give it, but he couldn't take it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a coward, yeah. basically. That's what he is. He's very scared. He. That's uh, it. Tries to protect himself. So, Harry, what do you think about that? He was an interesting character. I mean, oddball at times, but interesting nonetheless. No, I mean the um, 
Do you know the scene where Pinky tries to betray Spicer yeah, by letting him over to the mob? He was also I'm not certain if it's him or one of the other guys, but every time I saw him, he was either he was playing with doll, trying to pull the hair out of it and such. Uh huh. I mean, it showed to me that well, he may knew some things. There were times when he definitely was showing signs that he had a few screws loose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, anything to you put on that that topic there, Philip? Yeah, I think we're we're we're, just, we're pushing on nicely there. Okay. Right. So, uh, the only reason I bring up the twist is a very interesting scene, and uh, they come back to it. So, as you all remember, as I was talking about <coughs> uh, the 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 record yeah. Yeah. Pinky made for um, Rose. Now, do you find it interesting at the end that it does uh, because he did scratch it? This is how well done this film is. They do little bits here and there, then it all adds up towards the end. You know, him making the record, him trying to destroy it so it gets scratched, and then at the end it's on loop, you know, saying I love you. Yeah. I love find that it. interesting? I, it, tore, it tore my hair out, really. When she played it, I was like, oh, now she's going to know the absolute truth about him. And then when that happened, I was like, no, you can't leave it like that. Yeah, oh, I was, I was... <laughs> Phil, you mean you got a hair, Phil? Sorry. <laughs> we're talking to a, it's uh, a different kind of podcast. I won't be, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what I was going to say is, yeah, it does make you pull your hair out and yeah, you get, you know. Mm. But, um... Yeah, I'm... Exactly, yeah. However, I take it in a different light. I'm happy, in a way. I'm happy for us. Because if she would have hit that, she would have been heartbroken. It's yeah. true. No. And she probably would have taken her life as well. Yeah. Or maybe, or at least been depressed for a long time. So that, that scene was kind of thing, oh yeah, she's going to be happy now. She'll think of him in a good way, which is, this is how you're supposed to remember people, really. Harry, what do you think about that scene and how it all it came out at the end? It was, as she said, it was a good, a nice little twist. It reminded her, he may have been a gangster. He may have done things that was wrong, but yet he did love and care about her. And that was the I don't think so. I don't agree with her. He didn't love her. He only married her and uh, to keep him to keep her from talking. To keep about her mouth her. shut. Yeah. Because she's a she's a witness to um somebody's crime. To the murder. Yeah. Yeah. Fred's mu- to Fred Hale's murder. Yeah. And um, oh, by the way, the guy who ran off. He didn't have nothing to do with it. It's cut, but it's cut. Yeah. One with a moustache. Yeah. You know, that's his name. Is cut, but so. Uh, I like that guy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Played by, played by Nigel Stock, I believe. Yes. Do you know what I and called him, guys, Stock in the movie? Is famous for being in The Great Escape. That's the one. Yes. Yep. Yes. I called him the Moustache Man in yes. the movie. Do you know which character he plays? He plays the guy who, uh, you know, when they take the um, the wood paneling from the bunk beds for yeah. the, the tunnel. Another yeah. guy jumps on the bed and he falls through the bunks. Oh, that's that him. him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ali, oh. up. But um. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, a bit of like that. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, pretty interesting there. Thanks, Mel. I was trying to figure out who that was. Yeah. Uh, so we've. We've discussed, I think, most things this movie, so I want, I'm going to ask you all to about your favourite points of the movie. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. okay? Okay, so we'll start with Harry. Is there any point of this movie you think, yes, that's, that's awesome? I would say if I had to choose a favourite part of the movie, it would have to be the part that first got me interested in it, which was the opening credits, because you don't see opening credits like that anymore. Uh, I mean, yes. these days if you see... Credits basically just showing the name of the per- uh, just the name of the person. You don't get a visual of who they are or anything. That I mean, a movie like this, I wouldn't mind seeing more of them done this old-fashioned way because it would definitely get the audience interest in seeing what they ca- give an idea of what characters they're going to be portraying and such. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I could agree with that. Uh... I really liked the open secret actually. The only part of the open secret I didn't like was the uh, you know the beach bit where it goes with the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I really liked the open sequence with the characters, not the 
watching the kids on the beach. I don't want to yeah. see that, to be honest. But Hartnell, it, when I saw him first, I was like, oh, this is just the Doctor. Yeah, because yeah, he hasn't <laughs> aged. You, you know, he's still... But, yeah. But you forget, he's, he's only in his late 30s, then. Yeah, yeah it's because it's black yeah. and white, though. That might yeah. be a factor. And... Um, a uh, really quick mention before I ask someone, uh, uh, next person about the fairy bit. Anyone agree here that Hartnell, even though he was playing a bad guy, had just some of the the Doctor's mannerisms, just a few. Um, the, the odd tilt of the head, the way he the way he looked at you, you can see the Doctor in him as he tried to act. But yeah, like um, I'm sure he went like, hmm, <laughs> or, you know that head, yeah. you know where you know, hmm, something yeah. like that. I'll try and find that scene, but he. <laughs> He just hints of it, and it was really interesting oh, yeah. because yeah. every actor has their mannerism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so let's go to Philip. Any favorite part? Favorite part? Um, the whole thing was my favorite part. But what, other, but what I will <laughs> say is that I like I love how it show showboated Brighton as a place. Yeah, I loved it. You got the beach scene. You got the town scene where um, the, the bloke at the beginning was running through the town to get you know, to get away from his followers. From the people that were following, so it showed very uh, bright, very well. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I can agree with that. What about you, well, Mel? Can I just um, can I just uh, add a few um, other things uh, before um, I, uh, I I finish off my bit? Actually, um, did you, James, and I probably know uh, Harry wouldn't do because um, being from America, but did you? Understand some of the old slang words that were were used because they were very nineteen thirties uh, and nineteen forties. Yeah, I know. It's very weird. Um, for example, give us an example, Mo. I mean, I mean, do, do you know? Do you know what the word is? Oh, he was. Sp- it, um, this guy was milky. You know. Uh, you know. Yeah, milky and things like yeah. that. And, Half of them, I don't really That's understand milky. half of them, but... Well, the word milky is like milky white, very easy to fold under questioning. Milky white, you know. Mm. Yeah. And also the, the word, um, get a bogey, you know, for a police officer. Do you know what a bogey yeah. is? A bogey's a policeman. I thought that meant a plane or no, something. No, a bogey, sorry? Yeah, go on, carry on. Go on, um, Phil. Yeah, yeah a bogey, uh, the, their term for a policeman is a bogey. Yeah, do you know why? Oh yeah, because they because people were people were living fear of the police, so it's like a bogeyman. Yeah, it's the word is the word for a gangster. Um, the police is like a in America. I think they use the word boogerman, You know, yeah. As we say, bogeyman. So the poli- the police word would say as a bogey, a bogeyman. So you know, I thought that'd be interesting if you didn't understand what that means. So. That's all that means, but that doesn't matter. It's still a great movie. I think any generation would love to watch it. Um, but, but oh, um, yeah. got a favourite part then, buddy? My favourite part is when uh, when uh, Pinky pushes um, um, Spicer down the um, down the stairs, down the banister, and you yeah. see, but just before you see William Hartnell standing there going with the toothpick. Yeah, you know, very menacing. I love the way it's shot because it, I tell you what, spy, what um, the movie reminds me of, but it's not the same. But Dalo reminds me of. Is have anybody seen Goodfellas? The movie Goodfellas. Yes. Um, Dalo's character sort of reminds me of the uh, Robert De Niro char- uh, character, Jimmy Conway, where he he doesn't do a lot. But you know he's there, and you know he can mess you about. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's my favourite part. But yeah, I like I like the the bit where uh, just before um, uh, he pushes. Uh... Yeah, I like that scene too. Actually, Bye, sir. I like that scene too. But yeah, like I said, I like the way, as you said before, that um, Pinky uh, inspects the um, banister before he does the deed. Yeah. Yeah, like and, and um, can I just can I just fi- uh, fill in a, a few more things uh, as well, just before we? Um... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Paul. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Is um, do you know this was uh, written um, and and the the screenplay was written and, uh, and produced by the Bolton brothers, and um, there I'm were. Not twins. aware of them. I'm not. 
can you well, can you can you tell us about them? Well, they're ver- they're very famous um, film producers and directors. Like you know, they're like um, ah, oh, the Cohen brothers and um, the, uh, the, uh, the the those black um, American brothers who direct um, directed from hell. I can't remember their names, but um, but. John Bolton and Roy Bolton, but Roy Bolton produced it and John Bolton directed it. But John Bolton's famous for. Do you know who he married? Hayley Mills. Hayley Mills. I know. Yes. I know who that is. Yes, I know who that he is. He married Hayley Mills, who was a very famous um, child actress. actress in her who, day, yes, she who was. actually also gave birth. Who also they gave birth to. Uh, do you remember uh, Crispin uh, Hawks? Um, what's it? Uh, Mills. Um, who was in a band called Cooler Shaker? Remember Cooler Shaker? Not to my knowledge. They were no. they were a very famous indie band, but yeah, that's for. Better tell you all that useless information. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's not useless. Crispin it's very Mills. Interesting. Remember Crispin Mill? So Phil, you don't remember Cooler Shaker at all? No, but I wasn't. No, I don't. I know. I heard of the name, but I don't know the band per se. Yeah, yeah, but um, so. Do you, do you do you remember do you know who Hayley Mills is, um, um, James? Uh, it's not ringing a bell actually. He wouldn't know her. He wouldn't know who she is. He's... Child, James. Harry remembers <laughs> who Hayley Mills is, don't you, Harry? From the Disney movies, don't you? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I was gonna. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that made me laugh. Uh, I'll try my best. Um, I'm gonna have to go past. The... So I was gonna. Oh yeah, I need to point my favourite bit, don't I? I oh, forgot to say. Uh, oh cool. Yeah. Did I? Oh, Karen, sorry. What did I put? Did that? What did I say, guys? I don't remember. Sorry, sorry, Karen. Okay, so my favourite part. Oh, it's got to be the bit where Hartnell, you know, when uh, Pinky's like a. Uh, oh, hey, Daryl, you're just in time. You get the bogeys, I'll get the girl. You know that bit. And then you know Daryl just. Punches him in the face. Or is that a slap? Would you say it's a slap? Yeah, or a I, had, I told you not to touch that girl, didn't I? Yeah. Exactly, and that's yeah. great about that because about 20 minutes previously, he's really he really is allied with him, but he gives him one warning: do not touch yeah. that girl. And he sticks by his word. Because yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, this guy! Oh, he's so awesome. <laughs> it's a really awesome scene. I really liked the way. Uh, and then Pinky was like. You know, lost his mind because he never thought Dell would betray him. So he yeah, fell off. Um, pretty much, well, not commit suicide. Would you? Would you say that's suicide? What would you call that? Accidental death. Um, I would say that, that was accidental death, really. But he, but but you know, yeah. he had nowhere to go, and you know, that was the only way out for him. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have no sympathy for him. Oh, none at all. I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was in an extremely good mood when he died. <laughs> I suppose that makes me an evil an evil git, yeah. No. He was an idiot. Uh, yeah, he he wasn't a nice guy. Um what was gonna say now? I was gonna go on least favourite points, but there's not many, but I do know one of mine, so I'll point no. out first. So we will go on least favourite points. Um you know the scene where the big lady, I'm just gonna call her the big lady. Uh what's she called? Ad well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ida, yeah, that's it. Ida, and she's singing with her old party geezers to those people who are sitting on the deck chairs. Mm-hmm. Remember? Are they called deck chairs? Not sure. But they're, they're singing to those people in the audience. It's just such a grotesque scene to watch. Terrible singing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. not really fun to watch. I was like, oh, for God's sake, not this. Because yeah. I don't like singing type of things. I'm never really into singing movies. Well, musicals, they're called oh. musical things. Yeah, music. Oh, yeah, High School Musical should be burned <laughs> to the ground. Uh, you know, t- it usually consists of terrible acting, but luckily because they're good actors, I-, I could watch. But that was my least favorite part. Philip, what about you? Do you think there's any part of the movie what stands out as like, uh, I don't really no. care for that? I'm telling you now, from the get go, I I was drawn into it. I didn't find any fault with it. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't like like going. I didn't like. I don't like that. I don't like. I found it totally riveting. That's awesome. I like I like someone who likes movies. You see, I'm pretty much the same apart from that one scene, really. What about you, Harry? Is there any scene what stands out to you? What you think? No, no, I'm not really real interested in that. Bad scene in the movie. I mean, it's all a well-done movie. I mean, 
With the time period it was shot in, very well done. I love seeing Hartnell doing a role so different than what we're used to thinking of him as. I mean, it just showed off his tremendous acting skills. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, uh, what was I was gonna say that. Yeah, so you don't really. What about you, Mel? Is there anything you can think of? What? That's 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 negative. Not really. Apart yeah. from the beginning, where because it puts off people because they think it's a, a music. You know what I mean? At the beginning. Exactly. Puts yeah. Off like at it. first um, you think it's sinister, and then you hear the music. You. But it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Yeah, and you, you think, know, oh, what's going on? It's rubbish. Because when I'm trying to turn on the young people, on because um, you know. Um, our friend um, Ross, Mr. What's Rossable? Yeah. Um, I, I, I told him like last year to see this film. And I'm like, I'm buzzing because he's studying, he's a film student. Of course, and he absolutely yeah. loved it. Sense. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Mm. It's, um, it is a great film. So we, I've gone through everything I can think of, but obviously apart from the ratings. So before we get to the mm. ratings, I'm going to ask you all to point out things you think I've missed or something you really want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Harry. Uh, is there anything you can the think of? The only thing I can think film? of, and this is something I mentioned briefly, is that some of the scenes in this movie reminded me of a great American mobster movie. And I'm not even going to try an impersonation because... Me trying to do an impersonation of a classic line from that movie would be a disgrace to the movie. All I gotta say is, mm-hmm. I'm gonna make you an offer that you can't refuse, and leave it at that. Oh, come on. I want to hear your Brando. Come on. All right. You want my Brando? I'll give you my best Brando. I'm gonna make him an offer that can't refuse. You see? Genius. That's not half bad, Carrie. I'm gonna make him out of the camera. <laughs> it's just a classic, and I just can't add anything yeah. more than it got thought of that. I mean, there are certain scenes in this movie that just reminded me of that movie. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So, Philip, is there anything you think you can need to add? There's loads of scenes you want to mention? Anything? Um. Not really, no, no I, well, I, I mean, it's been a couple of days since I saw it, but uh, I'm, the, the, the memory of it is a bit hazy at the moment, because I am old. But, um, oh, you, oh, I knew you was. I knew you lying. Oh, go, or whatever. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. no, but, I, you know, no, I, like I said, I, I liked how it was played out, the characterization of it, but it was spot on. And it was a fun movie. It's a nice movie to watch on, on a Sunday afternoon, you know, and just chillax with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Uh, what about you, Bill? Is there anything else? Oh, I, I mean, it's it's a great, it's a great. You can watch it in the afternoon, but it's better in the evening. But can yeah. I just can I just say that um, I've read that. the book. I love the book as well. I love the book. Well, is the book available? Yes, it available? is, and it's also okay. available in the audio book as well. Uh, oh, I love audio book on Amazon. It's sorry. On Amazon, it's because, available uh, on Amazon some, uh... and on the uh, internet and everything. But uh, and it's read by this one. Oh come! Oh, he's a very famous actor. I can't remember his name. He's a very a famous actor. But um, is it called Brighton Rock? Uh, yes, it is. The audio book. But uh, the, the the author Graham Greene didn't like the actual movie. He doesn't like any of his adaptations of the movies that he's done. Really? He's done, yeah, he's done the Third Man. He's done everything. But all authors are like that. But um. You know, I'm you. I usually prefer the books to the movies that were originally the books, but to the to this one, I actually like them both for different reasons. Actually, Mo, do you think that the film version did justice to the book? I mean, does does the does the does I mean, obviously the book fleshes out a lot more than what? Do you think the film made it justice? Gave it justice? It's a different. It's a different version of the film, but I do like them for. For, for different reasons, because one thing, uh, for the for the book, it's a little bit more gruesome, yeah, and the language is a little bit more frisky for 1938. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do indeed, yeah. Um, because and also, um, it's a little bit more. If you think the movie's a little bit more psychologically messed up, 
Because it does mess your brain up for, for that age, you know. The books are even worse, if you know what I mean. Understood. Because it does the point of Pinky and the girl, you know what I mean? Because she's blinded with love. Yeah. You know? Um, you know. But there, there's some there's some scenes there's some scenes that aren't in the movie. Um, but it hasn't really hurt it. I mean, basically, you know, Dallow's character's not even really um, visible as the way William Hartnell uh, fleshed it fleshed it out in the movie. You know, he's just the ordinary um, henchman that just um, you know betrays Dallow in the end. You know, saying, "Look, behave yourself. That girl's love. Get that girl loves you." You know what I mean? But he's not he's not as, as well fleshed out. Uh, as he is in the movie, if I'm making sense. Understood. And it ju- that just shows you how great um, an actor William Hartnell is. Oh yeah, he's very ranged. Um, oh, I, I mean, to be honest, guys, this movie is uh, it's. And that's why I say to you, James. Actor. That's why I say to you, James. I'm sorry I have to give you this for over over a year now. That's why I say to you in the classic series. That's why I love the first four Doctors. That's why they're great. I understand. I tell you, the only one that I do feel, I think we both agree that Colin Baker had a bad outing in that respect. Yeah. And, uh, Sylvester, uh, Sylvester, uh, you know, we both have our different opinions no on comment, him. But tell <laughs> yeah, no, no can And Davison, I would agree that Davison. I tell you what, Davison's said, the only thing Davison was good at is things like period dramas. I've seen him in many yeah. of them. You know where. But we're getting a bit off topic yeah. here, I suppose. So before we um, wow. stop it's talking just, about Brian Rock, guys... Um, I was just going to say, the audio CD for Brian Rock is standing at £41. Yeah, who reads it? Mm. Like, it's, it's it, doesn't, it doesn't say. It just says Brian Rock by Graham Green, uh, 2011 audio CD, um, the author Graham Green, but it doesn't say who, who reads it. Yeah. I can't remember who, who, who reads it, but hang on, let me just... Oh, hang on, let me just find it. Yeah, hang sure. On. So, um, while he's finding that, guys, uh, I tell you what, honestly, when I went into this movie, I thought, oh, God's sake. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry, I was I like, thought, oh, this is one I of Moe's requests, but to be like fair, <laughs> to be fair, though, Moe's never given me a movie which uh, sucked. So I had a bit of faith in him, and I do love Hartnell, and you know what? Yeah. First thirty seconds won me over with that intro with Hart, and I was like, oh, "I've got to watch this." But 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 yeah, would you have watched it if if there was no Doctor Who characters in it? No, I still would have watched it. I still would have watched it. Yeah, because uh, Pink uh, Richard Attenborough is so sinister. Yeah, exactly. He's... The acting the acting from everybody in that in that movie was so spot on that you couldn't help but want to watch see it all all, all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you found it, Mo? Uh, no, hang on. Audio book. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh. <laughs> so, so uh, no, I can't. I can't find the the what. Yeah, I, I have okay. heard it though. I have heard bits of it. While you're working on that, uh, let's go on ratings. Uh, so Harry. I want you to rate this movie a, I would give out of this 10. movie at least I'd give it an eight. The only reason I'm giving it it's that is that low that number is it because while I enjoyed it, some of the stuff in there I just had a little trouble understanding. That's the only reason it's not getting a full scale ten for me. Excuse me, Harry. Did you f- uh, find trouble with the with the slang words and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, that's the, old, the problem. Yeah. I had the slang because. Otherwise, yeah. it was a well-done, superb movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Uh, what about you, Philip? Well, for me, it's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> say, say that again, that again you Philip. Up. You just went completely Sorry, yeah, out. I would have gave that. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. And I don't normally give movies of, of that caliber 10 out of 10. So, it's just... You know, I, I, I urge any people that's interested in wanting to see Brighton Rock, please go and find it and watch it, because it is good. Yeah. And if you really, really, really... And if you're a watcher of this and you really want to watch it, just uh, leave a comment, and I'll make sure you sort it out, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I help everyone. 
Um, but uh, I don't think I stab at anyone there. So go on then, Doctor Who man. What's I mean, I I love it because um, you know I love it because it, to be honest with you, for that era, for that era to shoot a film like that with no really bad swear words and and no really slash and gore that we see in today's movies, you know, like yeah. all British movies now, all gangster movies, you know, your lock stocks and your snatch and all that rubbish, you know. <laughs> but they're not, they're, re- they're just yeah. comedies, you know what I mean? But Brighton Rock still, <coughs> 1947 version still stands up. And for that, I don't really give a movie 10 out of 10. I read both the book and the movie, and the both, both the book and the movie are 10 out, 10s out of 10s. So... Yep, I see where you're coming from there. It's a, it's a great you know, movie. So, uh, I love it. And the, 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 the person reading the book is a guy called Richard Brown, but he's not famous. I thought he was a famous actor there, but it wasn't, so don't worry about it. Um... Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, my rating. Oh, I want to give it a ten, but I have to give it a nine for one reason. Only one okay. reason. Uh, what's the what's his name? Colioni. Yeah, Colioni. That's I wanted to see more of him. I found it a bit disappointing that the we only saw a little bit of him, and that's not negative. Obviously, he did great, but it would have been great if he maybe was, you know. Maybe another battle or something, or maybe even Pinky kills him and takes control of him. I don't know. Something like yeah. that, yeah? Uh, just a bit more with him. So that's why it's getting a 9. But 9 out of 10 is still sublime rating. The movie's fantastic. Highly recommended to anyone who watches Ooh. it. Okay. Okay, then. Is there anything else that anyone wants to no, only just like to say, from Morris, the Doctor Who man, James, thank you very much for letting us do this podcast on your show. Well, thank you, too. Thank you for uh, recommending this movie. It's very good. Okay, Philip. Yeah, sure. Any I last really advice? enjoyed this podcast, and I follow it. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that I was directed to a film that, you know, that is sublime. So thank you for that, at least. No problem, Harry. Oh, thank you for inviting me in on this podcast. It was a pleasure to see Hartnell in a role so different than what most people are used to, and I would have no problem coming back for another one. Be great to see you again. Okay, guys, thank you for listening to this one. Uh, I'm sorry about the schedule. I'll try and get something regular going. I'm thinking about Wednesdays because that is obviously a boring day of the week, and then there'll be an exciting podcast each Wednesday for you guys to listen to. So, uh, hope you guys have a good day, morning, evening, wherever you are. <laughs>